Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com, and in today's episode, we're going to look at the JavaFX table view. The table view is one of the most powerful and flexible of JavaFX controls. It allows you to display an unlimited amount of data in a row and column format, and it can be configured to be read-only or editable. If this is something you think you'd be interested in, stick around. We're going to get right into it. Today's video about the JavaFX table view control is the first in a series that I plan to do so that I can show you all that the table view control can do and so that I don't end up with one giant video that takes forever to watch. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a simple read-only table view that uses three simple classes and one plain old Java object. Since the JavaFX table view is one of the more complex controls, and in fact more complex than some of the other list controls, such as the list view or the combo box, it can accept a more complicated data model. The list view and the combo box basically accept single values, integers or strings, doubles and the like. But the table view can actually accept complex objects. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a plain old Java object that's going to serve as the data model for our table view. So in this project that I've already created called Table View Demo, we're just going to right click on the application package and create a new class. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to call this class person. Click Finish. So this new Java class is going to have three private instance variables. They're going to be first name, last name, and age. Now we're going to create a no argument constructor and in the no argument constructor we're going to provide default values for each of the three instance variables that we just created. And we'll also create a constructor that accepts as parameters one value for each of those three instance variables. and we'll assign the values from those parameters to the instance variables. And then I'm going to use an Eclipse shortcut to generate getters and setters for each of those instance variables. So right click, go to source, and generate getters and setters. And for all three of these, we're just going to select all and generate. And so here we have the person class with the three instance variables, the no argument constructor, the constructor that accepts the three arguments, and a getter and setter for each one of the instance variables. So that's our plain old Java object. So now that we've created our person object that's going to serve as an element in the underlying data model for our table view, we can go about creating the table view itself. So let's go back to our main class, and we're going to construct the table view using the table view's no argument constructor. Since TableView is a generic class, we have to provide the object that's going to be used to populate the rows of the TableView. TableView, table equals 
new table view and we provide the type of object which is our person object we'll import the table view role table view is the second of the four classes that we're going to be use the first is our plain old Java object person class the table view is the second so the next class that we're going to use is table column the table column is used to define the individual element that's going to be displayed in each of the table column. Our last name, our first name, and our age. So let's construct a table column for the first name. And since table column is also a generic class, we have to specify the object that this column is going to be extracted from, as well as the type of the, the instance variable that's going to be displayed in this column. It's the person object, and the type of the last name instance variable is string. And we're going to provide a column header. Let's just maximize this so we can get a little more space and see what's actually going on. We will organize the imports by importing the table column class in the javafx.scene.control package. And the next thing we have to do for this column is to provide a cell value factory that's going to be used to extract the first name from our object person. So we'll use the column that we just created. And keep these straight new property value factory Again, specifying, since this is also a generic class, the person and the string, and then the name of the instance variable as it was specified in our person class. For this one, it's first name. We'll also import the property value factory. Now, this parameter, first name, is how the cell value factory is going to be able to extract the first name from our instance variable of when we create a new person to display in the table view. It's going to use this value, append the word get, capitalize the first letter, and it's going to come up with the method name to call. So in this case, it would be get first name. And if we go back to our person class, this is what the factory will use. It will use get first name and it will return first name so that that can be populated into the specific role of the column for first name. So let's go back to the main class. And again, to save time here, I'm just going to replicate this for the next two columns, the last name and the age, and then we'll continue. So I've created the table columns for last name and age. And now we're going to add these columns to the table view. So table.getColumns. Which returns an observable list, and then we'll add to that list our first name column. And we'll do the same for last name column and age. So just to recap, we create the table view. We create a column and a cell factory for each of the columns. We then add those columns to the table view. We now have to add the table view to our root pane, which in this case is a border pane. So we'll say root.setCenter. and the node is table and then the standard we're going to create a new scene setting 
the root to our border pane. We're going to get a style sheet, and I've used the style sheet in this case just to increase the text size to 18 pixels. If you want to learn a little more about CSS, I created another video on that in this JavaFX series, so I encourage you to watch that. I've set the title of the stage to Table View Demo, Primary Stage, Set Scene to the scene that we just created, and we'll show the primary stage. So let's run it at this point and see what we get. We get first name, last name, and age, and we can manually move those. And we have no records in the table or no content in the table. We also, if you'll notice here, we have an extra column. Now, the way to get rid of that extra column is to set a column resize policy on the table. And so to set the resize policy, we use the instance variable table dot set column resize policy table view dot constrained resize policy run it again and there so now we have the columns have expanded each two at this point i believe take up one third of the available horizontal space last name sorry first name last name and age we still have no content so now we're at the point where we can add some data to the table and it's really quite simple. We take our instance variable, which is table, and we'll use the method getItems, which returns an observable list of the current items in the table. And on that observable list, we'll just add. And there are a number of ways that you could add. I mean, you could create all of this up front. It could come from a database. It could you know, basically be anything that you need in your program. What I'm going to do for the sake of illustration is to just create a new person object on the fly. And the first name and the last name and the age. And I'm just going to copy and paste several more records to go into this table. And we'll run it one more time. And we get some additional functionality by default without having to ever write another line of code to do this. We uh, can select the individual records in the table, the rows in the table. We can sort each of the rows in the table by column. In this case, first name either ascending or descending. The same with the last name ascending or descending, and age ascending or descending. So it could be any of the columns that we've defined. And we can also rearrange the column order by just dragging and dropping. I think that's where I'm going to leave it for this first video. We're going to pick it up in the next video, and I'll show you how to make this table editable, and we'll probably cover a few other things as well. So as always, leave any comments in the comment area below. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to come back for the next in the series where we'll continue looking at the table view control. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care and keep on coding.